Good morning, SMP Nation. Oh my goodness. Do we have a show for you today? I am so excited that you guys can all join me today. Look, I've got my, oops, I've got my little SMP pin on. We've got our mascot here and we are ready for another amazing show. Who is ready for Takeover Tuesday today? I'm not going over everything. I'm just so excited. <laughs> Let me do some shout outs this morning. I want to say hi to you. Oh, Thank you, Carol. Could you tell I did something different with my hair, you guys? <laughs> Everybody's saying, love the braid. <laughs> Let me say good morning to some of y'all. So we obviously, Carol Lombardi, good morning. Jill Mansfield, we've got Belinda Brine, and we've got Debbie Poole, good morning. Um, Wolf Guys, it's always nice to see you guys on here today. Joanne Banco, good morning, Joanne. Oh my gosh. Come and hang out with us. I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. We've got Lisa Giraratana. Did I say that right? I'm so sorry if I didn't. Um, Marsha Frost. Oh, my gosh. We have got a full house today. And I'm so excited that you guys are here for today's episode of Takeover Tuesday. It is going to be so much fun. We have the one and the only Jane Klaus here to get you inspired and get you creative with the things around you. And it's so amazing. And it's so exciting. She's just so filled with knowledge and the way that she, the way that she's creative just in general is so amazing. She was showing me projects beforehand and I'm just like, ah! she, you can ask her. I'm just sitting there like always just reacting. They're such amazing little projects and it's so awesome. So she will be on in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to make a few quick announcements real quick. We have got 
such a fun and exciting week going on for the rest of this week. And with our shows and with our events and everything, with SoFest coming up, everything is coming up so quick and we are just so stoked to be here and um, bring you guys all of this fun content. And it's so it's just so great. So great. Um, but we've got SMP Live this Thursday. We've got Tea Time with um, Amanda Carita from So So English. Uh, you guys always really loved having her on. So why not bring her back and show you some more info on fabrics and all that kind of thing. And we also have SoFest coming up. So if you guys haven't entered um, a project for the garment contest or the home decor please go enter a project it is so much fun and you have the chance to win some awesome prizes and also just make sure you're tuning in to SoFest also because Miss Jane will be co-hosting so if you liked her today tune in for SoFest and you can see a whole lot more of her and if you watched HoopFest this last time you'll know she's a queen with wardrobe changes I don't know if she's bringing the heat this year but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. She's she had I think she had like 25 to 30 um, wardrobe changes the entire time. She's just she's a rock star and I want her wardrobe as well. And she made it all pretty much. I mean, what more could you ask for? Right. So definitely check out SoFest. And also, if you like any of the products you may see today or any of the things like that, we'll have the links down to everything down below. So you guys can check out all the product, all the people that are going to be on. We've got Jane. And then we also have a very special guest, Chris Marchini, coming on to chat about his quilts and his very unique quilting style, which I personally love. I love seeing people change it up and, you know, not follow by the rules. I think that is so much fun and exciting. Just change the routine a little bit. So, all right. I think that's all for me, but let's go ahead and get Jane on here and chat with her about what we are doing today. I'm so excited. Hi, Jane. Hello, Kennedy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Oh, it's so gosh. exciting to be here at Takeover oh, Tuesday, gosh. Kennedy. This is great. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's been a long time coming, and you just you do so great on Hoop Fest and all of our other events and we just had to get you on i mean you haven't been on takeover tuesday yet we just had to get you on i know i've been like <laughs> okay guys why am i not on takeover tuesday of course my takeovers are gonna be a little bit different i think but that's okay that's fine i'm like you know like what, we what, love what, different show? i mean you're lucky i couldn't get the rockettes out here uh i'm super excited i want to say hi to dolly who's in chicago of course my buddy joanne hi joanne i love you uh barbara is in joliet we love joliet noreen uh, hi, Noreen. And then, of course, uh, you guys are talking about SoFest. I'm so excited about SoFest. Oh, my gosh. Um, not sure what's going to happen with my costume changes at SoFest yet. You know, there's still time, you know, but I think with the whole wardrobe change, it was so entertaining to see everybody commenting like, she did another one. She did another one. Because here I am. I had a whole, if you guys didn't know, you might have not seen it when you when you saw us on their little clips. I had a full whiteboard with tally marks of how many times she changed. And every time me and Roger were like, is that one or is that just the same color, but a different shirt? Like we were like, it was a conspiracy theory all week. I was like trying to trick you guys a little bit. So I would have like a you red did. shirt and you I would put just like a shrug over it. I'm like, it doesn't really count, but if it counted it, it counted. It's fine. Uh, it was fun. It's just because I had in my studio, I had a rolling rack of clothes and I was like, I might as well change my clothes. Where am I wearing these things? You know, it's fun. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you go ahead and get started and give them a little rundown, but I'll be popping in, in and out. You guys, if you guys have any questions, I'll be behind the scenes to answer for you, but get excited because this episode and it's also our 10th, it's our 10th episode. So what that. way to celebrate, you know? Ten. All um, right. Ten. Well, Jane. Ten. Hey, by the way, I will. You. Joanne just says, change your earrings, Jane. Just change your earrings. I'll do that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, Kennedy. Do, I, little, do dangles. Yeah, I'll do dangles. I'll get them all locked up in my hair. No, I'm really excited for this Takeover Tuesday with you, Kennedy, and SMP Nation and all of my <laughs> friends here. So uh, today, I am grateful you're here for spending this lunch break with us, or if it, it could be breakfast for you if you are uh, on the West Coast. But today we're going to share a little inspiration with a few projects. Uh, we're going to talk about upcycling and sustainability because that is something that I love to do. I feel like I've been upcrafting since upcrafting was cool. So we're going to talk through some of those projects. And we're also going to talk to Chris Marchini. He is a quilter. 
He is the owner of Rose City Originals, and he plays by no rules, which is my favorite part of being creative. So I'm looking forward to talking with him uh, a little bit about me. And a lot of you guys already know me, but you know, you give me the takeover, you got to talk about it. So um, I, you can find me, follow me at janeklaus.com. I think it's rolling, scrolling there at the very bottom of the screen. I would love for you to go to my website. Um, I've got some more videos there. You can watch some of my TV segments like Craft Room Crash which is so fun. I got picked up by Clicks TV, but some of the segments are airing on my website. Um, making it forward. People doing amazing things with their talents and their sewists, their quilters, they're making pillows and they're giving these things back to people in need. And I and I partnered with Fairfield World on, on these projects and or I should say on these segments and just uh, literally so humbling to meet these people that are giving up their time and talent to give back to those in need. So all of those things are on my website. Um, there's a blog on there. There's a podcast on there. Reach out to me on there. If you if you want to be on Craft Room Crash, let me know. If you want to be on the podcast, let me know. Let's just let's just hang out. Let's be together and let's do something there. Also, uh, find me on Instagram at Jane Klaus. Just search for Jane Klaus. Um, Pinterest, DIY by Jane, all of the good stuff. Jane Klaus is where you can find me or DIY by Jane. Uh, I am a lifelong passionate maker. Since the age of seven years old, there I am as a seven-year-old. I mean, can you guys make that bigger? I mean, what a cute little kid. I'm just sitting at my mommy's sewing machine and she got tired of watching me staple my Barbie doll clothes together. So she said, Janie, sit down. It's time for you to start sewing. And there's me with my very first sewing experience. Thanks, mom. Um, she was always my inspiration too. So I love it. Uh, and, and I'm a lifelong radio and television personality and my my passion really is to sew. So for me to be able to combine the two, I am truly blessed being able to do so. I am also a Brother Sews ambassador and I swear my dream come true is to be a brother ambassador. I drove up to the headquarters and that song came on the air. Hey, look, Ma, I made it. And I couldn't be happier. Of all the things I've done, uh, being a brother ambassador is just by far, I think, one of my greatest accomplishments. So I'm just thrilled to be a member of that team. Um, so let's talk about today because I want this to be really interactive. I want to have a lot of fun. We have uh, anything that you want to talk about, put it in the comments. Staple works in a pinch. Thank you very much, uh, Aaron, for staples for sewing. We, I think we can all move on past our staples. But um, listen, so interactive today. Let's have some fun. Any question you have, personal work, a uh, question about a content or an idea, maybe upcycling. I mean, very busy in the Klaus house this weekend. My brother was in town from Phoenix. Today is my husband Kurt's birthday. So it's it's a crazy time around here. I'm going to be doing things for you on pre-recorded video because just a peek behind the, the curtain, I'm moving my studio that you normally see me in to a new studio with with lights and cameras and backgrounds and sewing machines. So it's going to be super great. So today we're, we're just, we're kicking it here. So that's okay. We're going to do some things on video, but you know what? Let's talk a little bit about creativity because there's a reason why we love being creative. And I want you, thank you. Happy birthday to Kurt. I'm looking at that. Um, I want you to think about, cause you're all creative. You're watching this show and you guys tune in all the time, but I've got some notes here. Oh, Few facts about being creative. They say creativity can give you a 60% overall wellness boost. Why? Because it lowers your stress levels. It lowers your anxiety. It makes you happy. It gives you uh, like a better, in a better mood and you're a better problem solver from it. Who can attest to that? Everybody, yeah, Kurt with a K, by the way, uh, Noreen. Who can also agree with me on that? When you're in flow and you're truly creating something, you feel better. And so we always try to encourage our friends, just make it. You can make it. And we all have friends that say, oh, I'm not creative. Who has friends that say, I'm not creative? Yes, Marianne, it does release those pheromones, the feel-good hormones. Friends that say, I'm not creative. We have them. Right. So this is what we have to say to them. Do a little experiment. Channel your inner seven-year-old. There was a, an experiment done with researchers and they had two groups of college students. One group, they said, hey, you get a free day 
And we're going to give you a list of things to do. Free day to do these things. Other group, you're seven years old. Pretend you're seven. We're going to give you the list of these things to do. And when they came back, the seven-year-old's list far surpassed. They had so many more ideas than the people that weren't pretending they're seven. So who doesn't want to play like a little kid, right? <laughs> you know, a ton of people that say that, Lisa. Yeah, it is so much fun. I wish I could... Um, I wish that I could spend more time just in my little creative crafting world because it's so fun. We know that it's so fun. All right. One of the other ways where I find my creativity is at a concert, at a theatrical performance, at a music concert. And back, I lived in Phoenix, Arizona. I did radio and TV there. And back in 19, it was probably like 98. Yeah, I went, I was going to a concert. It was like a, a rap, a rap band, a rap, hip hop. Anyway, so I, I worked at a rock radio station. I was going to the other station's band and I walked in and they gave away these bands and like it was sponsored by Levi and they were just wristbands. They were cuffs and they were made from denim. And I thought this was the coolest thing ever. So it was a place that I normally wouldn't have been. I got this cool giveaway. My creative juices started flowing while I was watching the music as it was happening. And I started making these really cool cuff wristbands and I was like selling them and I was gluing some gemstones on them and just having so much fun. And I'd made them out of a, um, a twill instead of a jean or a denim fabric. It was more of a twill and a, and a heavier weight. And over the years, these little cuff bands have evolved and they've changed and I've tweaked them a little bit. And now that we are going back to school and the kids want to have friendship bracelets, I said, ah, this is a new version of the friendship bracelet. Because you know the ones where they're, they do the little, um, what's it called? Uh, the braid. Yes, they're doing the braid. And like those little tiny braids, which is great for little fingers to do. But this way, you can make these really cool cuff bracelets for your granddaughters, your daughters, your nieces, your friends, your neighbors. And then you can give them to all the little kids in school. And I call this a monogram cuff bracelet. And my inspiration started back in 1998. Kennedy, let's play that video. Show them You'll need fabric scraps, a decorative button, hook and loop fastener, scissors or a rotary cutter, a straight edge and pins. Cut the fabric scraps into four inch by 14 inch strips. This length will create a tail to mimic a cufflink closure. So if you want the bracelet to fit snugly on your wrist, then make the length a little shorter. Using the alphabet stitches on your machine, program in the name or phrase you want on the bracelet. Place the center of the fabric on the sewing machine, right side of the fabric facing up, and press start. Soon you'll have a smart design on your fabric. Next, fold the fabric lengthwise with right sides facing each other and the monogram name on the inside. And sew it along the long edge. Turn the fabric right side out and turn the end openings in to finish. And top stitch all the way around to close. Sew on a small piece of hook and loop fastener on the inside face of the bracelet. You can place the closure for best fit. I'm putting mine about an inch and a half in from the edge so I can create a fashion forward look. On the opposite side of the hook and loop fastener, sew on a fancy button or jewel. And there you have it, the newest trend in friendship bracelets. They're personalized. You can show all your besties just how special they really are. I mean, isn't that super cute? Here's what I love about that is that you're using that monogram stitch on your sewing machine. I was using the PS 500 and they have this great alphabet stitch. And so I was able to put all of my friends' names on there and make them that little cute cuff bracelet. You can also use, um, you can also do a flap over the top like these. So this is another version of that same idea, except you're making the cuff. This is the, this is the one I use that twill and I added some iron on bling to it. So this is just another sort of concept idea. Kennedy, were we able to get a still shot of that by chance? 
Um, and then here's one I did in white, but again, no still shot. Look at that, you guys. It's so awesome. We don't have a still shot, but you can see, I mean, you can see you can just see it. off that how gorgeous it is. I mean, everybody's commenting, cute, sparkly, yeah. love it. Super cute. So, I mean, like this one, I, I, I like to use all the different fabrics. And then I get, you can also get this in different colors. So I have it in pink and I do it on a pink band and I do it for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is so fun. Um, these are just what I find, friends is I love to do the personalized one and give that as a gift. But if you're going to add a little bit of embellishment on, this gem is an iron-on that just adheres to the fabric and it's fantastic. It sticks and people go crazy. And then you make them and they go, you did not make that. And you're like, yes, I did. I made so it. So adorable. It super, easy, super easy to make. So uh, do we have anybody, uh, anybody have any questions about it? Does anybody want to make Let one? Let me see. Let's go down I think here. everybody wants to make one now. <laughs> well, I, and, and the monogram one, and it was, it was, it was fun because um, we have a video of me making these. You can find that on my website as well. And we went in between like, well, do we want to show the video of this one or do we want to show the monogram one? And I said, let's go monogram one because the monogram one, you're able to use more of the um, the things on your sewing machine to, you know, the different stitches and the different uh, it, it ways to, to, to use your machine. Also, you can embroider those names on but I was focusing on this one particular machine. So I wanted to use the alphabet stitch. So make them lace up. That would be fun for your granddaughters, Sue. I love that. Um, heck yeah. That's great. Okay. Um, really fun. Again, you can use old jeans, old denim pants. I love to take the legs, cut them in the strips, and then you can make cuffs out of those as well. So that was, that's um, one of the things that I love to make and give away. In fact, I just gave one to my neighbor for her birthday. <laughs> All right, guys, this is so much fun. Um, I want to keep moving on because we've got a lot to get to and a very short time because I can talk to you guys all afternoon. I know you know that. But let me introduce our guest. I'm super excited. Chris Marchini. He is a TikTok sensation, my friends. He is a quilter. He is the owner of Rose City Original. He is a pattern maker. So now he's got the creative side and he's got the analytical side. We're going to get into that a little bit with Chris. Uh, I am so happy to introduce you to Chris Marchini. Chris, are you here? I am. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound great. Hey, Chris, how are awesome. you? Hello. Everybody say hi to Chris. Hi, everybody. Oh my gosh, Chris, these people are the best. You're going to love them. So um, we're this is such a fun show. So Chris, uh, you are the owner of Rose City Originals, which is a pattern making company for quilts, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Yep, I write all the patterns myself. <laughs> and before you came on this morning, because you're in Portland, Oregon. Yep. Which is why you're Rose City. Correct. Yep. City is <laughs> our Portland is the city of roses. So that's kind of what I named it after. And before you came on, I said, Hey, Chris, will you be my guest? And uh, you were like, I got this thing. I'm going to an art gallery. So what were you doing mm -hmm. before you came here? So I just got back home just in time to log on here, but I was dropping off some of my quilts at the Sherwood Center for the Arts in Sherwood, Oregon. For the month of September, they're having a fiber arts exhibit. So three of my quilts will be hanging there for the month. And I'm super excited about that. Anybody from uh, that area, anybody from Portland uh, watching us today, that'd be super fun. I'm sure, Chris, you got a whole entourage watching you. On oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Chris, I, I love your story. Um, you, you don't play by the rules. We're going to get to that in a minute because this is the part that I love to talk about when like the rule. And it's I love rules but I also love to break rules. Uh, mm -hmm. When did you actually start quilting? So I've been really quilting for probably three to four years now. I've been sewing since I was probably eight. Uh, my mom taught me I was not allowed to touch her sewing machine until I was 10. So I spent a lot of time hand sewing, which is not my favorite thing anymore. <laughs> um, but I've been sewing clothes for my my plushies i've been sewing clothes for myself for my children um i've done i did some quilts back in my teenage years just to fill in the time um but yeah, i everything i do always comes back to sewing and so this this bout i've had of being creative via quilting has been really really fun yeah and i, I love to watch you quilt and 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 friends if you if you're not on tiktok 
go there, find Chris Marchini. And I love to say his last name because it reminds me of Bikini, but it's Marchini. <laughs> um, and I sometimes just find myself driving. I'm like, Chris Marchini, because it's fun to say. But go on TikTok, follow Chris, because he's got like a fantastic following on TikTok. And you sort of started, you just recently started doing TikTok. I don't do TikTok, yeah. but you, what happened? Yeah, so I, I I downloaded TikTok in 2020 when the pandemic started, just like everyone else did, and I was a longtime lurker. But this past um, March, I was posting a progress video of the poison apple quilt that I was designing, and it just took off. Like, overnight, I got to 10,000 followers. I was at, like, 500. And then by the end of April, um, well, I guess by the end of June, I was at 25,000 followers. And it's just been growing from there. It's been a lot of fun. It's so fun. And your quilts are so fun because uh, your quilts have sort of a different design. And we're going to show mm -hmm. those in just a second. But before we get to showing the work that you do, because you have patterns behind all these quilts. And oh, by the way, friends, we are going to be giving away a pattern just so you know. So hang tight after you see uh, some of the quilts that Chris has done. But uh, Chris, you I always say this. You're like the no you follow the no rules rule. Right. Explain what that means. So a lot of people get intimidated when they start to get into quilting because they'll hear all of these rules and they'll hear a lot of conflicting rules. You have to use cotton thread or it's okay to use polyester thread. You have to press your seams open or you press your seams to the dark side. It, it's just, it's overwhelming. And so I just kind of play by my own set of rules, I guess. I just do whatever works. You know, I mix pre-washed fabric and non-pre-washed fabric in the same quilt I'll use polyester batting or cotton batting. I use different things for the backing. I'll use old like um, vintage bed sheets for the backside of it. And I promise you those have been washed. So <laughs> I just throw it all together and whatever happens, happens. I love this. And, and the comments are coming, you know, what's the favorite quilt you've ever done? Which I love this. No rules rocks, says Linda. <laughs> Be free, no rules. I love this. I see absolutely no eye rolling at you, Chris. So this is the oh, best. Good. <laughs> Everybody loves having no rules. So um, you talk about where to purchase your fabric, not to purchase your fabric. And you're fine. Go to the quilt store, go to the thrift store. Oh, yeah. I, have you know, spent $16 a yard on quilt store fabric because I loved the print. I have gotten fabric for free from friends or my local guild has an um, a semi-annual every once in a while free table where people just donate fabrics they're not using anymore. I'll pick those up. I will gladly take in those uh, vintage 90s floral prints that no one loves anymore and incorporate them into my quilts. Now, Absolutely. one of the things I love this and, and uh, Angel says, uh, what's the worst that can happen is my saying when I go off the rails. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what I say. I mean, it is what it is. It's going to turn out one way or another. At the end of the day, you're going to have a functional quilt. Yeah, it might be a little bunchy in one spot if it's shrunk weird. But hey, that adds to the character of it. Well, and, and so and, and you talk about this. Chris and I did uh, an extended podcast together that you could get on any place where you listen to your podcasts. Um, any major podcast uh, locations or go to my website, janeclass.com. It's there as well. But uh, Chris, you talked about um, the making a mistake and it all comes out in the wash. Yes. So that is one thing I learned pretty quick because I most creative people know that you are your own greatest critic. I would be making something. It didn't look the way I wanted to, especially when it came to the free motion quilting. So that's the, oh, which side am I on? The like the texture you can see there. That's the top stitching to hold all the layers together. And I used to do it just on my regular sewing machine and I would be going along and stitches would be different lengths. Um, I'd have like a spot where I like, I went the wrong way and bobbled back and whatever. But then after you wash it and it, everything shrinks up a little the batting is going to shrink at a certain rate the backing the front everything you get that lovely crinkle texture that quilts are known for and all of those mistakes disappear you just oh, don't even notice them anymore they literally come out in the wash come out in the wash yes <laughs> i love millie says i just love this man's way of thinking <laughs> and lisa says oh my god i just said that earlier so um i mean chris i love that everyone you know, sort of is 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 like in your on your same page they're all in the same mm -hmm. type of mind talk a little bit i i love this because you talk about and this is when i fell in love with you putting two pieces of fabric together. There's just something about it. And we can all attest to that. We're all sewists and we have some quilters. I mean, this is what we do. And then when you combine those two pieces of fabric, whether they match or they don't match, all of a sudden they're one. 
Yes. So, and I hear it a lot because I will post videos of me pulling fabrics for new quilts. And some people really struggle with that. They're like, oh, I can never get like the right colors and I don't know how to do this. And I just, you know, throw it all to the wind. It's, it's once you've taken your two fabrics that probably, you know, on the bolts next to each other looked like they totally clashed and were hideous. Once you've sewn them together, they magically become one piece. And because they're a single piece, they work, they go, they match. That's my yeah. philosophy on it anyway. No, I love that. All right. So let's, um, let's, you have great philosophies, Chris. Let's, I'm going to throw a question out there to everybody. And then Chris, you're going to answer it. Okay. Uh, let's take a poll. To use or not to use your quilts. We get quilts as gifts. We buy quilts. Sometimes they end up as a bed sheet. Sometimes they end up as wall decor. Sometimes they go on those ladders and they're just beautiful to look at. Chris, to use or to not use your quilt? And everybody can answer here. You ready for my answer? Oh, yeah. I love your answer. I say use it. If I gift my quilt to someone, or even if I, I sell it to someone, I'm expecting them to use it until it is not usable anymore. I want to see it in 20 years in absolute shreds because they have loved it to death. And I had a quilt growing up. I was very young. I don't know who made it. It was a, a crazy quilt. So it wasn't, you know, uniform pieces. It was just kind of scrapped together. And I would spend hours with it laid out on my living room floor, matching up the different pieces. And there was one print that I will always remember. It was a red print with tiny little white anchors. And I would always count and see, you know, match them up. How many pieces of this print are there? And I have those memories. I don't have the quilt anymore. The last time I saw it, it was in literal shreds in a laundry basket. <laughs> But I have those memories and I will always have those memories. I don't want my quilts to be sitting in a cedar chest or up on a closet shelf to be passed down from generation to generation where no one really has any core memories of this quilt. They just know, oh, yeah, that's, you know, the blanket that was in grandma's house up on the shelf that no one was allowed to touch. I don't want that. That's not why I make quilts. I want them to be loved. Snuggle with them on the couch. Let your kids drag them around the house. Love them to death. Drag them through the mud. I love that. And here's my favorite thing. Everyone Chris is writing in, use it, use it. I want everyone to use it. There's a couple of people that have that mindset. Like, you know, my sister gave it to me and I, it was hard for me to start using it. Like, I don't want to ruin it. And, you know, we know how much time goes into, we know like the effort and we know how expensive they are. And it's like, oh, I don't want to ruin it, but I love the idea. Use it. You don't want to put it away. You want to be able to look at it. You want to snuggle in it. And I love that everybody um, is saying use it. I, lo I love all the answers. So thank you for that poll, everybody. That's so much fun. And Chris, your story about matching the fabrics, and we all do that when we we're little, and that yours is mm -hmm. now torn into shreds. So yes. <laughs> God bless your little quilt. Uh, Chris, you are doing a virtual gallery. Is that right? Yes, I have one coming up. I believe it will post mid to late September. It is with AccuQuilt, so it'll be over on their blog. Oh, cool. So I want to talk through some of your quilts so that people are asking, I, now that I've got everyone thinking about, am I going to use my quilt? I'm, Wait a minute, I'm going to use it as a wall hanging. No, I want to snuggle in it. Um, let's talk about some of your quilts. So take us through the inspiration behind the quilt. We're going to throw up one of the pictures and, and the story behind it. So tell us about the poison apple. What's the inspiration and the story behind it? So the way I got to the poison apple is a total roundabout kind of way. Uh, I was doing a pattern test for a friend that was strawberries. And they were just small blocks that were strawberries. And as I was sewing, I'm like, oh, those would be cool as apples. Oh, those would be cool as poison apples. And so, of course, I had to put my own twist on it. And I just made one giant poison apple. <laughs> this particular quilt is the third time I sewed that up because I, I made my first one. There was a couple things I wanted to tweak. Um, I made it again in a color way that I didn't really... It didn't speak to me like it, it's fine. Um, and then I made this one for the pattern photo. So um, I usually make my quilts two or three times just to make sure everything's right. My patterns are easy to follow. Um, but that particular quilt, the first version of it, is really what got me attention on TikTok. Ah, oh, the poison apple. No. The poison apple, yeah. I love it. And somebody says, I can see the strawberry. So talk, talk to us about the dead like me, because, you know, we really never see, we've been seeing some rock and roll quilts lately, you know, people mm -hmm. hold like t-shirts and stuff, but I love the skull on here. I think it's totally like a disruptor in the greatest sense of the word, but like, you know, um, quilters of days of old, you know, I mean like hundreds of years ago, we're not putting 
skulls on their porch. Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, so I love skulls. I love like all things spooky and Halloween. Um, the first quilt I designed was for my husband and he's into houseplants. I'm like, oh, I should make something for myself that I really like. And that is a pattern that I can't find anywhere. And that's kind of how the, the Dead Like Me came to be. Um, since I like skulls, I you know found some reference images and I drew it out and you have to do it on a grid to get all your pieces and you know the order you're going to sew things together. But then I used some fabric from Free Spirit Fabrics. Um, they're known for very bright, bold prints. And so the background is very bright and cheery, which I feel is a great contrast to kind of like the spookiness of the skull. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Kennedy, do we have a couple more that we can show? For Chris? Okay, cool. Oh, good. Okay, let's talk to these two. Yeah, the mushy throw is my latest pattern. That's the pattern that I think we'll be giving away. Um, it actually isn't really even released yet. It releases this Friday. Uh, so that one is fun. I just thought it would be fun to try mushrooms. And I really enjoyed the fabric pull for that one, getting to use some of those softer colors. I love it. And then uh, Ghastly Love. Yep, Ghastly Love. So anyone who's big into quilting or even sewing knows Alexander Henry Fabrics, and they have this line that is the Ghastlies, and it's this weird family with this really weird um, drawing style. And so in 2019, I want to say they released a line that was Ghastly Love, and I bought a yard of it because I absolutely loved the print, and I had no idea what to do with it. So I just started making random blocks to go with it. And it's kind of hard to see in the picture. It's very detailed in person. But I used literally every last square inch of that yard of fabric in wow. this quilt. There's little tiny pieces where I sewed the scraps in to the patchwork just to use it up. Like I didn't let anything go to waste. But That's it was beautiful. kind of an improv practice. I had no idea what I was going to do. So I just kept building it and building it and building it. And I love how it turned out. And what's so cool is it's totally completely different than your other quilts. Yeah. Like yep. it's just a different idea. Uh, Nana says, I need to, I need to live to be 300 to make all of the quilts. I, want. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, and Chris, we've and I got lots of show to get to. And I want to ask you two more questions before we do the giveaway. Okay. You are very creative, but in your day job, you're very analytical. Did yeah. those two sides of your brain have to meet to be able to be a pattern maker? They did, which is fine because they're both in my brain. So it was an easy meeting. Um, but in my day job, I work for an international telecom company writing processes and procedures. So it is very technical and I have to explain things on a certain level that you know anyone coming in could just pick it up and run which is what I've done with my quilts. I've made it very easy to follow. Even if you're not, you know, a, a veteran quilter, I explain things and I have a lot of visual diagrams in my quilts because that's how I think. I'm very visual. Um, most quilt patterns are written, you know, join this piece to this piece along this side. And it's easy to get turned around because I've followed them and I have gotten turned around. <laughs> so this is actually the, the pattern we'll be giving away. And just an example, like I have diagrams to show exactly which piece goes where. So they're very easy to follow. Um, even though I have them marked as intermediate, I think if you just take your time and follow the instructions and watch my TikTok videos, <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be able to, to do that. Uh, yeah, and Linda, she says he has a job and he gets this much done. <laughs> I know. That's the, that's the first thing I asked him, Linda. And then Kennedy, if we have other uh, photos of his quilts, we can scroll through. So I want everyone to see Chris's work while he's answering my last question and before we do the giveaway. Um, and I think we do have some other ones to throw up. And if not, you can put some of the existing pictures up there. But um, Chris, you inspire millions of people on TikTok. And these may be people that are not quilters or maybe they're not even sewing yet, but you inspire them to get started. And I'm, I'm guessing Kennedy, we don't have any more pictures. We can just be able to throw some of Chris's. I think we probably have one of the one behind him. Hi, I'm getting some up. Give me one second. They'll be up in just a second. <laughs> uh, I love that. See, see how we're just like, I, this is so cute. Okay. So uh, Chris, you inspire all these people to get started. What is your what what do you say to folks who are not quilting? What do you say to like I, I sew, I'm like, man, I don't know, I don't think I can quilt. You know, I probably could, I don't have the patience, I, it's too hard, I don't know. What is your focus? What do you tell people to do to get started? Mostly just start. Pick a small project 
Uh, most people, I think, get overwhelmed with quilting because their first project, it's kind of a joke, but they always go for a king size quilt. That is huge. And I will admit that was me. I did that. Um, so just, you know, choose a smallish project and just go for it. If it doesn't turn out the way you want, that's okay. Keep going. Keep, you know, making it, learn from it. I always encourage people to finish their first project, even if it looks like a hot mess. That's fine. Just finish it, put your binding on it, wash it, use it. Put it on your couch as a blanket to snuggle under. Put it on your kid's bed. Put it in your trunk to use as a picnic blanket, but use it. Because every time you see it, you'll be reminded that you you did it, you finished it, and you'll be able to look back at how far you've come when you've finished your second quilt and your third quilt and your hundredth quilt. So and, just, just keep going. And don't worry about the mistakes. Now, Chris, don't everyone keeps asking me, tell us what your favorite quilt is. Do you have a favorite quilt or is it like picking your favorite kid? <laughs> kind of. I do have a favorite. So it is the uh, You Should See Me in a Crown, which I think was just up. That was my second version. It had like a pinkish red background. Yep, that one. Um, this one I was sewing one day because I sew pretty much every day. And I was listening to music and Billie Eilish's song You Should See Me in a Crown came on. And I just got to thinking I had just recently drafted the Dead Like Me pattern. It's like, ooh, a skull with a crown would be really cool. So I like hyper fixated on it. And it took me six days to design, write the pattern, make the quilt, bind the quilt, like all said and done. It was six days. And I like, I was that focused on it. And so that one still, it, it's probably still my favorite. It's so cool. And, and also somebody mentioned the other one was a Ouija board, right? Yes, there is that's a Ouija board. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. That's so cool. I love that. And we are going to give away the, the mushy, mushy throw. Mushy throw is the quilt that we are going to give away today. So Kennedy, I think we're going to spin the wheel for that one. Right. And what's going to happen is if your name is called and you're the winner, you will go on the website and fill out the information um, there, oh, there it is, smplive.tv to claim your prize. Tell us what you want. I think all the info's there. Kennedy can pop on uh, and tell us what we need to do. And after we spin the wheel, let's do it. Good luck, everybody. Oh, Chris, this is very exciting. <laughs> oh, I saw some of my friends in there. <laughs> How fun. Oh. We can't win. <laughs> We're going to spin it again. <laughs> winner. Sorry about that. Wait, there's no winner. Oh, we're going to do as it again. As much as I'd love to win a pattern. Oh, my goodness. One of you that guys, you guys will have to win that one. <laughs> Joanne Hull. Oh, my Yay. goodness. Congratulations. Uh, tell Joanne what she needs to do, Kennedy. I'm sure she probably knows, but just remind. Yes. So if you... Since you won today and you won that brand new pattern, go ahead and go to smplive.tv to claim your prize. Fill out all that information for you and put your address in there and we will get that over to Chris and he can go ahead and get you that pattern. Awesome. Congratulations, Joanne. Good Yay. for you. And Chris, I'm super excited uh, for Joanne to try your pattern. And if she has any questions, she can always reach out to you, right? Absolutely. Yes. And if people want more of Chris Marchini, where can we find it? Give, I us, am a on... full, give us a full shot of Chris right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm primarily on TikTok. That is definitely where I am most active. It's just under Rose City Originals. Uh, TikTok Chris. is... Full of Chris. <laughs> so they TikTok has recently changed. So you could probably search by my name as well. Just Chris Marchini. Um, I am also on Instagram. So you can see me there. Um, and that trickles over to Facebook, of course. So I am on most of the major platforms. I post a lot of short videos of like how to do the different pieces of my pattern. So the half rectangle triangles, probably the most unique to my patterns. I've got a couple of videos for that. How to do your binding. You know, I just I post what I'm doing almost every day. Yeah, I mean, give it to us uh, one more time because I was talking yep. over you trying to get Kennedy to just put your face on the full screen. If you no can problem. do that, Kennedy, put it all on. Hey, go there we go. You, Chris. Um, so on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, I'm just under Rose City Originals. I do have my Etsy shop as well where you can purchase my patterns. Also under Rose City Originals. Try to keep it easy for everyone. And you can check out all of my uh, my videos there. And... Hopefully I'm easy to find. 
And hopefully next year I'll have a YouTube as well. I am working on that. <laughs> well, you're a very busy man, Chris. We really appreciate you coming on the show today. Everybody say thank Absolutely. you to Chris. And Chris, you and I will be in touch, won't we? Yes. Thank, thank you, you so much, Chris. I wanted to pop on here before you leave. <laughs> yes. I love, I just loved hearing everything you have to say. And please go check out his social media. I've been not going to lie, I've been stalking you a little bit. And I just <laughs> loved seeing all of your videos and everything. It's so much fun seeing the creative side of, you know, putting it all together and your creative patterns and just everything. I'm just love it. Love it. Keep doing what thank you're you. doing. Thank you. <laughs> and thank course. you for inspiring us, Chris. You are the best. Yes. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, Kennedy. Let's keep the let's keep things moving along here, people. Thank you so much. Let's keep it going. Chris, isn't he so great? I, I know. love him. I, love I him read so an article much. about him out of like the Portland News or something. I'm like, I I need to know that guy because he's doing some cool yeah. stuff. And I love well, his when you, experience. yeah. When you brought him up, I had noticed. I he popped up. If if you've been on TikTok, we have there's a for you page and it kind of shows you all of the stuff that's like recommended to you. And he popped up on our for you page for SMP's TikTok account, and I was like, who is this? who is this I need to know and then a couple days later like I was going to reach out to him and a couple days later we were talking about the show and you're like there's this guy Chris Marchini I really want to interview him and I was like perfect oh my gosh He's I good. love it I love it so just, it was awesome how it all I reached out. out to him uh, a couple months ago after I read the article and I, I had to have him on my podcast because I love the idea of the no rules rule and his idea of putting two uh, pieces of fabric together speaking of putting two pieces of fabric together. Let's keep things moving here because time is flying fast. Let's people. I feel like I need to just be a little shorter and I can fit right underneath the... the, the, the <laughs> this is oh, one. here. I'll, no, no, I'll, you I'll leave, go back leave it on. We're doing this. Oh, it oh. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna get low. Okay, so oh, um, see how that works? So uh, let's change gears and talk about upcycling, right? So I have two mottos in my world of creativity and that is imagine, design, create, and then that's number one. And number two is repurpose, recycle, reuse, and refashion. So I always try to take something old and give it a new life whenever I'm making anything. So the thrift store, uh, my closet, some of my favorite places to shop for fabric to remake something into something new. So what is happening in our landfills, right? 85, we could recycle our clothing. 85% of the clothing that we own ends up in a landfill. We know that's not good. We know that the fashion industry is trying to do their best. We, we have a long way to go, but us as creative makers can actually help and take those items and make something new out of them. And instead of fast fashion, we do slow fashion. So there are ways to take our trash and turn it into treasure. And I would love to hear what you guys are doing with your um, creative finds or your your uh, thrift store finds uh, and let us know. I'm going to show you what I've been doing. Um, yes. My yes. fashion or some of my old <laughs> clothes. Which one are we going to do? By the way, I'm reading another thing. An average item of clothing. Oh, my gosh. The, an average item of clothing is only worn 14 times and then it's thrown out. And then it ends in the landfill which is a sad, sad, sad state of affairs. So let's recycle some yes. things. Uh, which one do you want to start with, Kennedy? So let's show off. I might cut me off, but it's okay. You guys will just see me behind there. So let's, I think my favorite is that orange sweater. Okay. I'll show them that. That's my so favorite. We all have the closet full of old sweatshirts, right? So the sweatshirt on the left <laughs> is the before. Um, it's either whatever. It was like my brother's and I took it. It was his from like, whatever high school. It doesn't really fit me. I wanted to make it cuter. So I, t I have a uh, Luminaire uh, XP1 and I took it. I embroidered the word love across the front of the chest. I bleached it. I cut it and I re-sewed the sleeves back on. So I took that old sweatshirt that would have ended up in a landfill. I mean, yes, I could have given it you know, to somebody who was going to wear it. Uh, could have brought it to the thrift store, but who don't know what's going to happen to it. So I made that super cute cropped bleached sweatshirt. And we all know that that bleached out sweatshirt look is totally in. And then I use my embroidery machine to design the word love because I love love. Oh, yes. No, I think 
just even something as simple as, you know, repurposing just a sweater. I mean, you can do so many things with it. You could have made it a t-shirt. You could have, you know, taken the extra fabrics and made a scrunchie. I mean, there's so many opportunities just with one, I mean, a four inch piece of fabric. I mean, you can do so many different things. I was selling scrunchies in 1989 in college. I was like, I've got scrunchies for two bucks. Um, All right. What else do we have? So let's see. So let's do this. Talk about this. Okay, so those, what, what that is, is focusing on her jeans, her denim jeans. Uh, if the jeans are frayed at the bottom or they don't, let's say they're too short or you don't like the way it fits. It was tail, you know, it was like a, a fitted, a tailored cuff or it's too wide. I believe those were too wide of denim. So I cut them off at the knee and I added some fancy fabric to lengthen the leg and then also put a little fur around her knee. So it kind of looks like she's wearing a boot, but it just kind of elevates the look of the denim. I've also done it with a pair of black pants and I did some black faux fur at the bottom. So it was super fun. Uh, And it kind of just, it dresses things up a little bit. Um, So I love, I love that. And that's really easy to do if they still fit you in the waist and you hate the way the bottoms are just upcycled. I could see you pulling this off, Jane, going out to a concert with the pants and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, Okay. What else we got? So let's do, talk about this. So really, really big into repurposing neckties because by the way, have you seen someone wearing a necktie to the office lately? Not so much. I was downtown Chicago yesterday and I'm looking around. I'm like, not one person's wearing a tie. I mean, yes, we wear, we wear ties to church. We're going to wear ties. Maybe if you have to go to court or if you're a lawyer, uh, if you got a fancy dinner or a big affair, but a lot of times those ties are just hanging on the closet. And sometimes they have like a little bit of gravy on them. So I take my ties. This is a really cute wrap around tie skirt. And in between the tie skirt are zippers. So uh, I upcycle my ties into skirts. What else we have for ties there, Kennedy? So let's, since we're on the subject of ties, yeah. Let's talk about this. So again, and and I know you've all seen this. These are neckties that I turned it into a footstool or a tuffet, if you will. And for this particular one, I took the stuffing out of the neckties. But uh, uh, again, there are patterns to do this. I was using the the inside stuff with some of our friends at Fairfield. And then because I've got all the excess pieces of tie, I made pillow coverings that match the tuffet. Uh, behind uh, on the, there on the couch, which was super fun. I kind of did a little crazy quilt with those um, pillows. And by the way, I know we see people used to tell me like making clothes out of ties is like fashion 101. And I was like, well, I'm using these ties to turn them into something else yeah. and giving them a new life. And I know you know this because the ties are, um, you know, they're some of them made of silk, but they'll stretch. And so I was making halter tops out of neckties as well. And the halter tops were a little bit stiff, but as the person wore them and their body sort of heated up while they were wearing them, they just sort of kind of conformed to the body. Super interesting um, that is so process awesome. that you're creating with a fabric yeah. that is not typically used to be form fitting to the body. What else do we have? Do we have another tie? So, the wedding yes. Dress? So we've got two. Yeah. So let's do this one too. Right. So oh this, is a, this is a wedding gown made of all uh, white neckties. Boy, I wish that was uh, bigger. But anyway, it kind of poofed out into the front. And a photographer I met along the way said, hey, can you make a necktie out of, or can you make a wedding dress out of neckties? And I said, yes, I can. So I found a lot of white neckties and I, the front was just, uh, it was just, a strapless top. It poofed out in the front. I made a little crenoline. So actually the poof was in front, not in the back. And I worked with a milliner and got a fabulous hat and we just did a great photo oh shoot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm reaching out to you <laughs> when, when my wedding day comes, it'll be a long time from now, but yeah, that was really okay. fun. I made two, I made two wedding dresses that for that particular uh, photo shoot, just because I was like, well, I can do it. Okay. What do we got next? Yeah. So let's see. So we also have this with neckties too. That's on your side. Let me. Yeah. This is another place that uh, your, your grandpa can spill his gravy right there on the table runner. So I did this for Christmas. So easy guys. This is the cutest thing. Just add this as a table runner to your holiday celebrations. And uh, again, spill the gravy all over that. Not necessarily on your shirt. (laughs) Okay. Let's see some more. Okay. So we're going to do some rapid fires now. Yeah, let's do so, rapid fire because I want to get some giveaways. Away. And yes. I still want to do my, my last video too. <laughs> yes. So 
Let's talk about these. Okay, good. We? This will be our last one because I love uh, t-shirts. We have so many t-shirts. Our husbands have t-shirts that are stuffed in the closet. I have t-shirts that are stuffed in the drawer. I'm never going to wear them again. So this is a t-shirt apron and that is my brother and his wife. And I did this for them for a wedding gift. And he, he went to DePaul. He's from Chicago with the Bulls. And I, I can't remember what's there on the bottom. But um, I took three shirts. These are reversible. So these are T-shirts. And then uh, she's got hers with a little bit of eyelet around it. But she's from uh, just Southern Illinois. And and uh, I can't remember what else is on her shirt. But just three shirts. Turn them into an apron. Super fun. It tells a story. They can wear them. Uh, the guys, you know, the guys I call them girl master protection wear because they're like, I'm going to grill. I also also think friends you can do this because football season is starting september 8th and mm -hmm. i get maybe we don't all like football but there's a way we can all be a part of the football season and that is by doing your home decor and sewing your way through the entire season because it's so fun all of the fans will appreciate it and you will score big wins with anything handmade that you can create so again get your favorite teams and make these aprons have them bring it out to tailgating. I love it. They are adorable. I love so, them. And it's a great way. The little eyelets make it so perfect to like feminize the the oh. apron a little bit. Just yeah. differentiate. Yes. I mean, there's so you can make them reversible. Uh, so much fun. Yes. Lisa, just around the corner is our football season. And I do love it. Okay. So um, just a couple ideas about upcycling. We, we certainly want to do what we do our part. Uh, as makers to to save the environment. And I know manufacturers are trying to cut back on styrofoam and, and how we package all the things that we're sending, but let's do what we can do for now, right? And get out there and do it. Um, I, I really, I know we're running fast on time, but I do want to show, it's never too late to talk about Halloween, my friends. And if you've got a toddler that's growing out of that black jumpsuit or the black sweatsuit, uh, this is a cute little butterfly costume that you could start making now. And the little toddler can be super cute for the Halloween season. This is a jumpsuit that she was growing out of and we turned it into a butterfly. Let's play that really yes, quick. Yes, let's and run the play. You'll need your brother's sewing machine, a black long sleeve sweatshirt or t-shirt, one yard of black fabric, one yard of orange fabric, and a half yard of white fabric, pattern paper, fabric marking pens, scissors, measuring tape, and straight pins. First, draw a butterfly wing pattern on a piece of paper. I started by measuring the arm length of the sweatshirt, which was 40 inches, and sketched one side of the wings using the bottom of the sweatshirt for guidance. Folding the paper pattern in half, cut out the full wing pattern. You can lay it on top of the sweatshirt to get an idea for size. Next, fold the right sides of the black fabric together. And using the wing pattern, cut out your wings. You'll cut two from the black fabric. Now, using your scan and cut, create multiple sizes of circles and cut them out of white fabric. I'm using eight circles per side. Now let's create the wing details. To do that, draw a teardrop shape in several sizes. Scan the pattern into your scan and cut and cut it out of the orange fabric. You'll want to fill the back and front of the wings with these teardrops and circles. You'll use the same size teardrops on each wing for symmetry. Pin and sew them in place. You'll do the same with the second set of wings. Lay the finished applique wings with the right sides together and sew around the edges. Turn them right side out and top stitch. To attach the wings to the sweatshirt, cut the sides and bottom of the sleeve along the seam line. Lay the sweatshirt open with the arms outstretched. Place the wings onto the right side back and pin the wings to the top of the sweatshirt sleeves and pin the center back in place. Sew the wings to the top of the sleeves and sew the back of the wings to the sweatshirt. With the right sides facing each other, stitch up the side seams and sleeves, making sure the wings are stuffed inside. And turn it right side out. And there you have it, a cute butterfly costume for your little bug. This costume will keep your toddler warm while still looking adorable. Just pair the top with black leggings, comfy shoes, and an antenna headband, and your baby butterfly will be ready for that Halloween party in no time.
Uh, that Jane. She's it so is cute. so adorable. I cannot. It is, it's so cute and so easy. I mean, anybody can do that. I'm even with just a little sewing machine. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. So and I love, uh, I saw a comment go through Vanessa. She said, um, hey, I'd love to do this out of vinyl and just iron them on. So what, yeah, you know, you can, you can do a little even, um, you know, whatever it's called. When you put it in between, you iron it on. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, okay. it's okay. Everybody give me a high five if you understand what I'm talking about. Um, high five for Jane. <laughs> but no, no. Um, great idea. I love I love the idea. Like if you want to make it easier, don't sew it on. Just iron it on and do a little adhesive um, on there on the back side of it. The other idea that you can do with your black is make a skunk costume. Let me just come back. It's so, so cute. This is a hoodie and I've just added some faux fur and then a little stuffing inside a tail and she wore it just with uh black pants, black sweatpants and so if you didn't want to have the butterfly, you can make a little stinker. <laughs> and that's so stinking cute. Put some shoes on there. Again, back to recycling and using those old clothes. Uh if you don't have anyone to use them, then this this is a really cute idea. So I love that. I love it. Um, I love it. Never. Thank you, Marianne. You got that right. COVID brain. I can't find my words either. Okay. So I love the Halloween ideas. It's time to get geared up to start crafting and sewing for the fall. Cause I mean, we have so many things happening in the next few months that we're going to work on. I know we're going long. I really want to do some giveaways. I want to do some giveaways too, Jane. We, <laughs> you know, we have the mutual love for giveaways and they know I love giveaways. So what do you have for us today? Uh, oh, am I doing mine first? Do you want to do yours? Should we do ours first? And then what do you guys think? What do you guys want to do? We'll do mine. Let's ask. Okay, let's do yours. Okay. So I have a couple of t-shirts, friends, uh, because we are very, our, we're all our own domestic divas in our own way. So I'm going to start with this shirt right here. Uh, it's just a t-shirt. With a high heel stiletto, it says domestic diva because, the, I mean, so I have, I have one of these. I have four shirts to give away different kinds. So should I show them all and do them all or do this one first? Um, let's, let me pull up the giveaways and we'll just do it one yeah, at a time. A little rapid fire question. giveaway. Okay. All right. So for this black domestic diva t-shirt, let's spin the wheel. Who's going to win? Who's it's a gray win? shirt. <laughs> uh, it's it looks fun. soft. Yeah. I love the stiletto on here. EJ's daughter. Congratulations. Okay. So go ahead and head to SMP Live. I've got this up on the screen here. Go to smplive.tv, fill out all your information, and we will go ahead and take care of it and get that shipped out to you. All right. What's next, Jane? Uh, I'm just writing down EJ's daughter because I'm going to send it to her. Um, <laughs> I got, let's see, I've got this is a, um, it's a, it's a thermal shirt, if you will. And it says domestic diva. On it as new well. style. We like it. A little Prince variety. A long sleeve, great for the winter and fall months. So let's see who's going to win this one. Let's see. The suspense. It always, it always is killing me. I'm like, oh, I just want everyone to win a shirt. <laughs> let's see. Ah! Wolfgeist. Congratulations. Yay, Go Wolf ahead guys. and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize. And you have uh -huh. just got yourself a brand new cute little Jane Kloss exclusive. I mean, sure. they are exclusive, my friend. Let me just put this here. And now You're I have joining the club. I have two of these. These are super cute. Now these are. <gasps> oh my gosh. Let me see. If I can get you on full, full screen, screen real quick. Yeah. Look at there that. we go. It's so cute. It's a little oven. How adorable is that? Yeah, so cute. It's oh white. It's a white. Flat, like a white thermal shirt. I have two of these. So let's go ahead and get back to spinning the wheel. Let's see. And I'm, I'm taking notes too, so I can remember who's got what. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Uh, let's see who's going to win. Nevaeh Sound. Nevaeh Sound. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. So go ahead. I'll put this back up on the screen. Go ahead and head to SP Live. Dot TV to claim your prize, and we will get that and we have brand new t-shirt out to you. And and we have one, one more. more. Okay, Jane, let's see which one we've got next. It's just <laughs> me. <laughs> we've got one more. One, no, shirt? one more of the same white one. Okay, so let's yeah. do one more. Win it again. More. You guys are all going to be mashing. 
Yeah, everyone, like, we're all guys- the best of us because we can do everything. Oh. Right up in the pan. Oh, yes. Sandy! Sandy Hurth, congratulations. Oh. Go ahead and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize, fill out all the information, and we will get you that new shirt. And also, you guys should definitely, once you get the shirts, take pictures in them and send them to us. We want to see them. We want to see them. Or tag me on Instagram. Yes, tag us on Instagram. SMP is on Instagram, and so is Jane, and so is Chris. So you guys can all check us out and see what's going on. Okay. I think... It's time for our giveaways, you guys. Do you guys want to know what we're giving away? You want to know? Okay, I'll put it up on the screen. So, our first giveaway, we're going to be giving away, let me get this off, the iconic SMP sew mats that we love so dearly. Um, we always have these, and we've got new colors and new sizes. So, let's see who is going to win. Let's see. I love let the get color. Off here. Let's see. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So when you win, you can go ahead and pick your color that you want and then also pick the size. So if you've got a bigger machine, Pamela Nessler, Pamela. congratulations. Woo, 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 woo. So go ahead and head to smplive.tv. It's right down below to claim your right. prize and we'll get we that on out to you. We love the mats. The mats are the best. I know mm-hmm. it. As I'm transitioning my studio, and I'm like, oh, I got to get my mats. Okay, let's go. Yes, let's- you have to. If you need new ones, let us know. <laughs> All right, so our next giveaway, I thought, let's end it with a bang. Let's go all out. We're going to be giving away a Brother BM3850 today, which is so great because that way you can try some of these new products or new these new projects and get inspired and maybe try one of Chris's patterns. You never know. You never and know. Also, my so. inspiration videos that I showed you today are also on Brother's Stitching Social with... Uh, step out so if you got the video you like it you want more you can go to stitching social and see it there to learn all of the tips and tricks and the how to's and the step outs there you you go even more info yeah it's so much fun you know might see more jane (laughs) let's see who is gonna win today's giveaway i do i love that this is portable it's a great little machine i love it adding it angela ball oh angel ball thanks Angel uh, Ball, adding, congratulations. Adding that, to, adding that to your crafty stash. I mean, I always say yes. more is more less is a bore. So congratulations, Angel. Yes. And I mean, just with machines, it's always great just to have one to travel. You know, this one's small enough so you can take it and go anywhere with you. So congratulations, Angel. You've just won a brand new machine. So once again, just go to smplive.tv to claim your prize. And we will get you that brand new machine so you can start stitching. Congratulations to all, all right. Winners. Thank you for having giveaways. Yes. That's so we fun. had a great little yeah. lineup of giveaways today and a great lineup of the show. I'm so happy that you were able to come on and hang out with us for the day and give us a little inside scoop of your creative brain. I mean, so inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. inspiring. Yeah. I'm I thank you for having me on the Tuesday takeover. Super fun to just be free and do whatever I want to do. Uh, but I want to thank yes. everybody for joining us and for watching and hanging in with us. Again, go to janeklaus.com. I'm going to be doing uh, a lot of brother Facebook lives with our friend Angela Wolf in the coming months. So t- stay tuned for that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to co hosting SoFest with you all in the middle yes. of September. I think it's September 14, 15, 16. Well, yeah. Through yes, the-, the 12th or the 16th, I believe. Uh-huh. I know you might be leaving a little bit early, but. That's One okay. day, I have a wedding. I always have days. a wedding. I, you know what? Actually, um, oh. w- when it was, uh, it was in the summertime. Fest, it was right? fest. I was going yes. to a bridal shower. Now I'm going to the wedding. So you guys just pl- oh. you always plan these things when I have to go to finish off whatever it is. Anyway, I'll be here. I'll for talk the- to Blaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I'll be here for SoFest. Uh, you can find me on some Facebook Lives for Brother. You know, go to my website, hang out on social. I'm I'm wherever you want me to be, and I'm happy to hang out with you. Ask me any questions you ever need. And yes. uh, thank you for having me today, everybody. Of course, of course. All right. Well, I think that's it for us today. Make sure you guys are liking the page on Facebook, following us on Instagram, and go check out Jane. Don't be shy. Go check her out, and you'll learn something new on her website. I'm sure we all do. And look. Isn't that so stinking cute? Right? <laughs> I'm gonna I go love it. All right, guys. Good going, people. Yes. Have some fun. <laughs> Bye, Chain. <laughs>
All right, you guys. Isn't she just the best? Isn't she the best? Oh, we love her over here at SMP. She is just great. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for coming on today's show. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your Tuesday. And we will see you tomorrow for a new show and the rest of this week. All right, you guys. Don't go go follow some no rules. Go break some rules today for Chris. It's in Chris and it's for us, okay? Go break some rules with your quilts and we will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.